Today's episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast is brought to you by AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. We are so lucky today to be speaking to Chris from Big Nose Barbecue, who has so many different things going on, which is fascinating to hear in this episode. And also he has a big part in Sizzle Fest as well. But I'll let him talk about that. So without much further ado, here's Chris. So hello, Chris. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, would you like to introduce yourself, Instagram handle and all of that? Hi, uh, I'm at Big Nose Barbecue, um, Chris Rowland, by real name, aka Big Nose Barbecue. I'm a um, father of one, happily married, um, trying to do the barbecue life down in Southbourne, South Coast, uh, Dorset, England. And, and what thanks, are you... Thanks for coming on. It's... Yeah, I was going to say, what, what also are you kind of heavily being connected to recently that Owen and I have not stopped talking about? Oh, in the back. Oh, OK. Well, look, let, let's raise a glass to to or, or a Yeti cup to everybody that came along to Sizzle Fest. And yes. um, at, like, I, you know, we talk about the barbecue community and I love that. But actually, mm -hmm. I've ch I've changed it in my mind because I have to get it past my wife the amount of time. And, and it's, it's even I, I can mention some names in a minute. But um, and, and this is this is a parallel to a lot of people that we've got to accept that we're going to be allowed out the house for the day or we're going to drag them to it. Some are some partners are asking to come now but also you know um it's a commitment and sizzle fest it's like it's a barbecue family for me because it, it involves my family because there's a sacrifice that's made which is basically for the certainly for the three weeks leading up to it i'm barely at home um mm -hmm. and there's a lot of like late night midnight 2 a.m phone calls ideas at six in the morning on the school run um it's relentless but it is the family that make the festival and the fest festival means people it means it you know it means a gathering of people so when we talk about sizzle festival it is the people and we basically just we're the aggregators we're kind of like that we're, we're like the the infrastructure and um the people that kind of have to plan about you know things like toilets um and toilet rolls and various like things that you wouldn't think the, gla the glamorous bins, stuff bins <laughs> generators um staging how high should the stage be um where the backdrops should go banners scaffolding um speakers i mean that's that's kind of like my forte really um toilets and audio equipment um so yeah that that's that's the thing but uh yeah it's just a massive massive um thing that relies on every single person participating as much as the people and the sponsors let's not forget about um tmg bacoa um as a, as a thing collective um weber yeti traeger gosney um who else we've got oh the butchery guys um and uh craft meat dorset meatbox.com um all those guys you know the queue together guys the guys that do the um uh, broil king you know i just go on weymouth 51 it's just it's unbelievable and then the, and then and then the people that come with those people that bring those people that then are attracted to it so yeah and tom gosney flying over i mean it's just one of those years where where um where, where the guys uh tom um and uh, party tom and and that came over from from america um so it's really really good to have and, and spicy jack so i mean this year like i, I want to take my hat off but my headphones are on top um, <laughs> no matter whether you've traveled from, from from, from totten you know my mate will you know i went to school with this guy and he's like at barbecue school now like it's brought us back together that's why it's family because he was like family to me and, and it's like this thing the community keeps growing but the the, the longer this community is going it is a uk barbecue family um, so I'm really hashtag UK barbecue family. I want to see that trending now. <laughs> now I that. But, um, but yeah, and you, and you've you, heard it here first. And you guys getting me on to talk about it. It's just, I, it blows my mind because, um, you know, a lot of these things born out of lockdown, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Not, not boring our wives with talking to them about barbecue the whole time. It's finding people who want to talk about it. It's what we've, yeah. why this came from really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we we are like there was that there, there is this sort of um, I call it the cooling off period. And it's literally like two weeks after Sizzle Fest, we're not allowed to do any like our, our family have banned us from getting on those Skype calls and <laughs> planning next year. And they think we're nuts. Um, but actually, this year, my wife came and enjoyed it. So I think I've got a bit of a um, I think I've definitely got the sort of extra support because she brought some friends. And this is the point. Bring 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 your partners, because I tell you what, this thing, it's like once they see it and they understand why 
Um, but it's more of an event, the entertainment and, and the drinks there. So um, it's like, but then they understand, they get it and they see the community, they see the community, which is now a family. And um, yeah, great. It's, 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 it's really an honor to be able to serve, the, serve, serve everybody in that way and just be in the background, getting things done. Yeah. Yeah, but awesome. don't spoil my childcare. Like, you know, if oh. he's someone to look after the child all day, then that's an option yeah. as well. But people <laughs> people driving on half term or, or whenever this gets played out, they're, they're going to be turning down the radio now. It's like, I'll listen to this later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's uh, what, what we found so uh, such a change to the other, you know, kind of festivals that we've gone to is that primarily the people that are going to the sizzle fest are people within the, the uk barbecue community so they're super passionate but in some way shape or form it, almost everyone's already been talking to everyone and it's the annual get together or it's yeah. just you meeting someone for the first time but you might have been talking to them on socials or text for for months uh, and and i think that's the difference to other places that we've been which is a bit more sort of general population yeah, I, th I think I think there's something to be said there, and it, and it's kind of like I've got a lot of respect for for even pub in the park and wing fest and all of that sort of thing, but these guys um, they they have to run it like a company because people want to go to these events, and I've been involved in events my whole life, and and it's a corporation, it's a business, and it has to be a business, and we're kind of learning this with Sizzle Fest is that we can't keep losing money or just about breaking it or borrow it. We borrow so much stuff off people that, you know, goodwill runs for a certain period, but because it's a barbecue community, we're able to keep that um, period going. It's like Premier League players that don't get paid for a while. They, they kind of, they get itchy, but I mean, if, if they were, if they were brought up in the, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of that thing where we're just trying to keep it as reasonable as possible for people, especially in current climate. Um, and I think that the difference between us and them is that the brands know that they're going to reach the people that are loyal to them on that day. I think that it's an exchange of, it's like, thank you for your support. And obviously all the blogging and the social media and the stuff you guys do. And, you know, whether you've got 400 followers and you're into, but you, you, you know, you're into barbecue and you, your mate says, come, come to Sizzle Fest. It's excellent because these are people that buy these products. Um, so it's a great thing for the, for the industry so it's an industry meetup where they're not at a trade show or they're not at a big thing like pub in the park where they've got to put a big gate, a fence up, you know, where you've got crowd barriers and you've got a marshal and he's saying you can't. And, and, and it's that sort of thing. I mean, that's why we, we I, I always have this health and safety chat. I don't know if you, if you had the live before. So, so fast, I'm like, look, tell your kids, or if you do have to bring your kids for a couple of hours, there are hot things there. But I mean, look, if you grow up around barbecues, um, you kind of you, you're aware of it whereas if you don't grow up around barbecues and suddenly you find yourself in an area where there's loads of live fire going on um yeah things can happen so it's really good that we can keep it like that and it's really good that the people there understand and i think it's it is that thing where you get together in a car park and and you can talk about each other's cooks you can talk about why you're using that grill that year or who you and and, and recipes and, and and it is that thing where you know in the pandemic um we were doing we were doing the sizzle stuff and raising money with, with the likes of um, with, with the likes of James and Cork and Dom Hampshire hosting these massive lives raising money for charity um, and I think boozed up during one of them quite early on I said look when this is over you know I've got some PA equipment oh, I know a few people we, we we you know we could do something and then Charles is you know Charles and and and, and all the guys at SoCal um, uh, you know Lindsay his wife very tolerant again another tolerant barbecue wife. Um, you know, and, and they, they thought we were mad, you know, Pete and Andy down at the yard, we, we're like, we're going to empty, like first year, they're like, what? Uh, <laughs> now this year, we're like, you need to empty the yard. And we kind of got them on side, but they were still a little bit unsure. But now I think it's like everybody goes out beyond their remit to put it on. And um, I think that's the vibe that we've got. Um, and, you know, we, we're going to try and keep that going. And, and, and I think we've got to, I think if, it, you know, if we did something for the public, it would be a different thing in a different location and we would see it differently. And maybe, you know, my, in my heart, it would be some of the guys that are involved in the supporters of Sizzle Fest. You know, we've seen people like Still Smoking come up and he's running his pop-ups and stuff. You know, maybe they want to be involved and have have some sort of concession or or, or do something or sell something. Um, but that that is a very different beast. And I take I take my hat off. You know, you look at the history of grill stock and those sort of um, those founders, the, the guys in England 
Um, it is so easy for things to go against you when you're hiring land and you're putting infrastructure in on that level. And then you've got the extra levels of security because, you know, to make a public event work, you, you, you know, you've got to get, you know, you can't be doing five, 600 people. I think we only have 499 for, 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 for licensing reasons. So that's okay. <laughs> um, but obviously over the day in out, you, you kind of have a few yeah. more, but what I'm saying is, is the minute you go beyond that into, into like commercial licensing and all of that stuff, it, yeah. It's, it's a different beast so it's yeah it's really nice to be involved at i'd say the grassroots level of barbecue or the lump the lumpwood level of barbecue we're, we're, <laughs> so we're done yeah. there yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the thing is as well you all obviously get on together so well you guys running it and i remember earlier in the year kind of see it in public in public yeah in public but yeah. seeing on instagram the fact that you went all the way out to texas together and went yeah. round and that. Tell, tell us about that trip because yeah, for Owen and I, it looked like a dream, an absolute yeah, dream. It's it's another dream, and and um, I think that was born out of the fact that we we the only time we had ever actually met um, originally was to put on this festival, and then since then James has been doing some work with SoCal, helping them with with their website and stuff like that, and he he flies in and out, you know, once every couple of months, and we'll do a demo day or we'll meet up at a barbecue school. But in that first year, the first time we met each other. Um, and it's quite, emo it was emotional. It was like, hey, but we felt like, and I don't know if you guys feel this and people that are listening feel this, you feel like you know people. Mm -hmm. Like the first time I met Marcus, for example, like he's a superstar. Like there's, there's people that aren't in the barbecue community at the school that go, do you know that, you know that fellow Marcus? Barrett? Yeah, yeah. Cause they've seen, and it's the fact that when you walk up to him, you feel like the, 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 the ice has already been broken. And that is the power, like yeah. social media. There's so many negative things about social media. And when people talk about, it, and I've been sat around a table at a big family event. Oh no, no, no. And then I said, do you realize how much money we raised in lockdown? Um, you doing Instagram lives for the Royal College of Nursing for help for heroes and, um, or, or you know, low, uh, there's too many charities, but, but, do you see what I mean? Like social media used in the right way in, and certainly in the, in the, we've got the bakery crowd and, and, and we've got the barbecue crowd and some of them are into pizza, which now comes over. And then we've got the food bloggers that go out and cover all the, the takeaways and go to restaurants, whether it's fish and chips or kebab. Like, you know, these guys, um, they, they've put their passion down into um, like social media and it's a network and it's a, it's a, it's a coping mechanism. It's a help mechanism. And, um, and it's great. Um, I totally agree. It's, it's it's unbelievable so we we actually first uh, that we'd never met each other until the first sizzle fest so actually coming back to the texas thing sorry i go on a tangent because I, I get I, I, <laughs> no, still no, no problem. I, I, I still can't believe it um i don't want to beat the record for the longest podcast ever i, I don't know which one that was it's like three episodes um you, you break it down no but um texas was the fate the fact that we um we did sizzle fest we got away with it people enjoyed it it, it was like a micro version of what we did this year and it was like the test and it was um and then it was like right we need to we need to have a social we need to get together and next thing you know i'm getting sent this link with a flight date and um it's like <laughs> right now i need to get this past the wife bearing in mind at that moment i'm still running clubs in london so i'm actually out the house four nights a week away five days um so i'm living in in digs away and you know christmas is the busiest time of year in in the west end of london and then it's like literally back for a week i think i went up did new year's eve came back by the 7th we're on a flight over to texas and um a lot of that was thanks to um sort of a few people pushing the the agenda um and you know at, at that moment in time it was it was like right okay I should be doing the bathroom in the house or I should be finishing the studio that the plasterboard's going on this week, by the way. Um, so it, it was one of those things. We'll, we'll, we'll have the, uh, we'll have the update of the studio in, in, in another episode. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> can. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so basically we ended up in, we ended up in Texas. Uh, we flew in, um, we went to Archery County, um, uh, Archery Country, the awesome guys there. Uh, they said, look, we're, we're off to shoot some, um, some whitetail um so if you come back at the end of the week they lent us a traeger to take in our van to oh. do some to do some tailgating so we took a ranger with us uh no it wasn't a ranger it was another traeger the small small one i don't know the full product range uh, digby does you have to ask it anyway so we did <laughs> we did that then then we got over to um to snows and yeah. then we went over to wahatchee um we got to franklin's uh leroy and lewis um oh jerby um jerby uh, um at Goldie's, which then become Texas number one. They were actually recording a documentary there 
on that day some of the guys managed to get on that i was too busy drinking beer and chatting with the locals um <laughs> so, so that was great and, and to meet aaron franklin he came out of his house he, he, he heard that we were in town and somebody said oh those guys from england have made it and because it was so fresh out of the pandemic um and it was a bit of a risk and my wife's like why are you going there and like in texas the, like covid didn't exist in texas when we went there Right. no nobody wore a mask. Um, it was like going from england where i had to pass three things to get on the flight and then i had to do all this documentation you get down the other end pff, covid didn't exist and my <laughs> wife's like look don't be doing that and i said look i've been working in sub basement nightclub I'm like, blah, blah, blah. like yeah but you're gonna be on a flight and um lo and behold i get a phone call while i'm out in texas my son's gone a mile up the road caught caught covid i mean he's fine <laughs> obviously um i've done the whole the whole period in in, in america um and, and avoid it but it was a funny time because not so many people have been there for a while i still think it was like it, americans go to austin and that it's like a bit of a destination like vegas is but um for english people to be going out there i think they go but they don't go as a big group and they're not like a, a barbecue a set of guys that blog for barbecue so we were really yeah. really well accepted and and i recommend it to anybody if you go out there um don't say that you know us guys because no, no. <laughs> but go, go out there no go out there and speak to people and it's passionate and if you get there early enough like tootsie um cooking um over at, over at snow's in the morning and she smiled at us and she's hey you're from england and then she's so busy working like it's it, it's like you know it, it blows your mind she's there shoving it just like you saw on netflix it wasn't you know sometimes you watch something and it's dressed up no she tootsie bless her the queen of barbecue is there through the night in minus temperatures all right next to the pit it's it's hot uh and she's literally just using her hand to gauge the temperature she doesn't look at the temperature case and then um they said look um uh, so um the guys from tmg uh they they know um like his uncle his uncle is related to the, the guy, one of the business partners. And they said, look, do you want to, do you want to come forward? And like, no, no, no. We want to stay in the queue. And we did the queue. And, and then uh, at the end of it, we were so lucky that Clay and, um, and Tootsie came and actually like sat with us and chatted with us for a bit. And we, we got our photos and, you know, Amazing. That, that, that was just, it, it, and it was just the whole experience of seeing the sun rising over the back of the smoke. Cause I've got some great pictures. I, I, I might repost them actually when, when this podcast goes up so people know what I'm talking about, but it's like that. It sounds spiritual. religious, almost it, spiritual. That, that's exactly what it is. And um, it was January you know and and um i wouldn't want to be there i wouldn't want to be there in the heat i mean in january like half minus one early like four in the morning we were there half three four in the morning and then you know by by midday it's getting warm as it is you know <laughs> imagine being there these guys queue like four five six hundred eight hundred deep you know on on a hot day I, I couldn't do that but people drive for miles and and some of them are picking it up like saturday morning to take back for their for their dinner on sunday after church i mean it it is religious religion does come into and and it is it's like that that is that is the whole thing isn't it it's like church and barbecue and um you know god god bless them it, they they really do put their heart and soul into it um yeah it's, really, it's definitely it's definitely a dream holiday for me yeah yeah and, and the guys at yeti again the guys at yeti gave us full access we we filmed there we chatted they came out um they met us not just once but twice they took us to, to leroy and lewis um yeah really really good to to have that sort of support network and, and i think if you reach out to people and say we're coming that that you know they will they will let you see a bit more or that or they'll be receptive to the point that you're there and they and they they, they get excited by it so um i highly recommend it to people um so yeah let's see if we get another trip that would be great um just gotta get that past the uh the family budget <laughs> at the moment but um I'll, I'll let us know if there's a couple of spaces <laughs> yeah well i mean i mean this is this is the thing it's like do we do, i mean is this a plug on from sizzle fest it's like is there something in the future but it's very hard now you have to kind of get you have to get like a tour license and stuff if you want to take mm -hmm. people and like hire a bus and there's very funny rules about how you structure like doing um tours but is this something that we look at in the future and we say do you know what we're gonna we're gonna organize something we're gonna get off there's gonna be a coach there and we're all gonna just go and do it and, and i think that is that is probably like a next level dream. But I think, you know, in reality, we've got to get through the next couple of years and keep our heads down and stay healthy and work hard. And then I think that could be, that dream could be realised. Um, you know, if anybody wants to organise it, because I'm too busy doing Sizzle Fest, <laughs> uh, count me in, count me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, 
but yeah, America is, is, is highly recommended. And, and actually that was a chance for us as a team to kind of um, bond and actually learn about each other. And, um, you know, Cork snores, um, Digby, <laughs> Digby snores. Charles doesn't like sharing hotel rooms, but why should he? Um, Steve, Steam Train Barbecue, who's basically Charles' best mate, who is the backbone. He, he, he's like our stage manager um, on the main stage. Uh, great fella. So it's Charles and his best mate. And then an Englishman, an Irishman, a Scotsman, and an Englishman that's Asian that lives in Copenhagen. So we're a right, we're a right bunch, a right odd bunch. But I mean, you get down to the stockyards and and you end up getting free drinks because everybody claims to be half Scottish or half Irish. Yeah. They never go, <laughs> oh, I'm half English. Let me buy your drink. But if you stand with them, you actually get drinks. And it's weird. It's like, you know how guys buy girls drinks? It's like if you go out there with an Irish, so take an Irish Irish fella and a Scottish fella. And it's like you get drinks bought for you. I've, I've never seen that. Like, I've never felt that, that love before. Um, it, it was no strings attached, by the way. <laughs> Never happens to us Welsh. <laughs> We're the ones who have to buy the drinks most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so just out of interest then, uh, you mentioned obviously that cooling off period where you're, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're banned from talking about barbecue for a couple of weeks just after Sizzle Fest. Yeah. And yeah. We're what three weeks, three weeks out from it now. So just after the cooling period, yeah. hence why we managed to get you on. Yeah. <laughs> When, when when does Sizzle Fest 2023, when's the conversation starting, if they haven't already? It started this morning, actually. Bill, Bill was on his way somewhere. Corks shouted a few things. I think we get together in about a week's time um, in terms of like a Skype call. And then there'll be further conversations in November. I think the main thing that we've got to do this year is, is just try and find a sponsor that wants to kind of um be like a title sponsor because what it is is you've got to realize that we we've taken so much from everybody now including the production company that i do a lot of work for um which is kind of leading on to something else that i'm, I'm setting up is almost going back into having a production company that that does other things so that it can find <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that I've, I've stumbled i kind of moved away from that for a bit and naturally i've been brought back into it so i'm kind of looking at ways that we can kind of um do other activities that then generate like you know a lot of events kind of have smaller events that then sort of enable mm -hmm. you to have some cash flow to to, to yeah. do what you want so yeah i think that's what we're looking for really this year is we, we need to find a way to make it sustainable um and there's lots of ways of doing that but um unfortunately it's like especially when 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 we we, we put on the news at the moment and there's a lot of negativity you can't keep empty in the same people's pockets or the or the same um like the brands are there for us but they've been very generous but what we need to do is kind of like accept that things change a bit and and like loyalty means everything so we can't rely on them heavily they, they've helped us prove a point so if anybody's out there that wants to wants to you know maybe they've got a company or something to do with barbecue and and they feel like they want to um, come and get involved and, and we get you know if you if you sponsor sizzle this isn't an advert by the way but if you sponsor sizzle fest and you know this year we'll, we'll put some packs so it's like a team uh, like a corporate day out on as well as yeah. part of your sponsorship so that's what we've got to look at do doing to make it sustainable it's like you know i don't want to do it like a, a football grounds where you've got a box and all those guys sit in the box and and they get preferential but you get a package with a day out and and that that then enables you to warrant spending a bit more on advertising because you get the you know you get the full package and the hospitality and maybe a bit of barbecue school thrown in and and, and other things from SoCal. So yeah, we're, we're we're looking at that at the moment. Um, but the conversations are happening, um, and um, and yeah, and and you know we've had a lot of great feedback. I'll be honest, it's like um, it, some of the feedback I, I I brought a tear to my eye. Some of it made me um, think. I want to say this in a politically correct way. I think sometimes when people write feedback, they forget that we're volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we can make it really professional. And we only charge, what was it, 35 this year, I think it was. And um, it actually costs us £80 a head to put on. So that tells you, I think it's 83.57 or something. Um, it's on a spreadsheet somewhere. And I, <laughs> I do stuff and somebody else looks at the spreadsheet and at the end they say, this is the black hole and i go oh okay but we've done it now <laughs> let's talk about the next one um so yeah no, 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 the production guys never want to be in, in in you know so i just kind of work within some perimeters and and um yeah so it's like everybody's been very generous there are things that we can always improve like this year was a big improvement on the previous year 
Um, next year, we know where we can improve things. Um, you know, some of it's service stuff, some of it's f like food va vari variating, maybe one stage was too loud and the other one was too quiet. But, you know, to change those things, you've got to put more money in and, and you know, product it's like you guys with a podcast, you start with something and then you you buy a little bit more, you buy a new microphone and you think, Crikey, this is just a podcast. Like when, when you're dealing with, with entertainment and, and you've all, you know, when you do a festival, you've always got to have something in your pocket for the next year. Um, yeah. So th th I think that's the stage that we're at now in the short and simple is we're in the exploring and listening stage. And trust me, we love the feedback, even to hear the negative feedback. And that's what we need to improve ourselves. But then sometimes it is a bit disheartening when you think, yeah, but you're getting great value. So, so that's yeah. just a little bit. So, um, but I know, I know that like 95% of people, they get it. And, and it's great to just share that with you that we're, we're re we really appreciate um the feedback that we got and we we are working on it so yeah we're, we're plugging the holes in the ship <laughs> with, with all that right. work you're doing and you know barbecue being part of the work you're doing as well what what do you do to relax and blow off steam if you just need some headspace or what do you do to uh, relax um basically uh, I, I i well i like this time of year because this time of year i um i can do the low and slow in the garden and it's very calm and it's not hectic in the summer i, I like I just basically i'm out fishing i'm out catching see see go, going for bass uh, going for uh anything mackerel um flounder any anything flatties you know and um, there's some nice there's some nice um there's some nice place in at the moment so i'm going to be going after those this week um so yeah that's what i try to do i try to go out fishing i've got i've got a boat with my um with my wife and my and my father and all the three of us I uh, went in on it and it was like one of those things where I spent my whole sort of career working in London, being away from the family. I never went out at the weekends or, or evenings. So like that little bit that I managed to to, to have a, a because I wasn't, you know, going through my, I kind of like when I finished in the clubs in London, I was like, right, that's the whole thing was was like, yeah, when I quit, I've got to have enough to 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 like have a decent deposit on a house and be able to have a boat and i've managed i've managed to do that um so yeah that's what i do i just go i go fishing and it is literally i'm blowing off i'm blowing off 18 years of steam of working in licensed premises djing touring um managing and and so yeah that's my thing and i, I think this year's been a it's like a transition year for me i haven't quit london to be a to, to do barbecue but I've quit London so that I can have time to be involved in things related to barbecue. And then I'm, I'm just sort of freelance working bits and bobs on the side. So it's, yeah, it's definitely, um, it's great. So I think, I think that's it really. It's like, get your smoker going this time of year, low and slow. I, th I think in the summer, it's like life's really busy and hectic. So it's like, right, we'll grill or, or we'll do a tomahawk or we'll do some kebabs or we'll, we'll do stuff like that. But yeah, because I don't have time. And obviously the, the end of August is literally coming into sizzle fest season. So it's, yeah, it's all, all, all hands on deck. So um, yeah, it's, it's fishing and smoking barbecue. I suppose one lends into the other as well, surely. Yeah, it does. I mean, there's nothing better than catching a bass, bringing it back um you know gutting it scaling it out on the lawn i'm banned from scaling fish in the house um <laughs> and then literally i'm a, I'm a bit like um you know I, it, it's it's like i don't know like uh, floyd or rick stein or those kind of guys they kind of say you know fresh seafood langoustines things like that i don't catch langoustines but i, I i'm partial. it's literally like butter garlic bit of olive oil lemon that is it scallops the same thing i don't i don't, I don't want to be messing around with it like it goes on it comes off and you eat it with a nice salad simple you know and and that's that's the great thing when you catch your own fish you you, you you're already in your mind never go out never this is this is a trick if you're get, if you're thinking about doing this or you're gonna go out fish don't <clears throat> don't go out and buy all the sides and have your barbecue think i'm gonna barbecue tonight fish because if you think like that you won't catch anything so you, you've you've kind of just got a Go and catch something, then say I'm going to barbecue fish tonight because I've I've learned that it, it never works the other way around. You can't you can't invite everybody over and say oh, I'm going to go and catch some fish today because uh, because the boat will probably break down. I mean, uh, power steering went the other day and I had to go back in. So so um so yeah, don't ever promise anybody fish. Just just be grateful when you catch it. That again, that's biblical, isn't it? It's like you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> 
If you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk. So kind of move, moving forward for you then, obviously, you know, you, you've already mentioned that you're looking at, you know, Sizzle Fest 2023. Yeah. You're saying you're doing fish and you, you were kind of doing sort of freelance, you know, in terms of the kind of DJing and that type of thing that you've you've been doing. Um, but on the barbecue side, you know, have you got any kind of plans for how you move forward into into next year? Yeah, so I, I, um, I was very lucky this year. Um, this is another thing. Don't ever agree to do a pop up. And then DJ in the afternoon of a festival, then finish your pop up in the evening. Because what happens is, is when you come back from doing your two hour set, everybody's seen you. They're like, oh, that's the barbecue guy. And then by the time you've walked back with your records and you've got back behind your, the queue's massive. And you're, you basically, yeah. It, and you've had two hours off. So you're behind on, on everything, like getting, getting, getting another batch of chili on or, or the next batch of pulled pork ready to go in, in, in the hot cupboard. So, um, yeah, I've been very lucky this year where, um, a couple of guys that run little independent festivals for 500 people on their land over in the new forest, they were like, Chris, can you, can you come and do barbecue? Um, so yeah, we did the pop-up thing. My wife came and helped, um, I think it, it. I think it is a family business. When you look at the likes, I say, still smoking again. All the family are involved. You can't. You can't rely on mates. Look, you can like barbecue buddies, but you can't yeah. just and and you can't you can't rely on casual. You, you when you start, and if you listen to Good News Barbecue, it's the same thing. He had his son out working for him in in um in in uh, Oregon this week at, at the American football game, and it's it's that same thing where you you kind of like, oh, babe, I really need you. So you put them on you put them on the card machine. Because they're, they're temperamental. Man, don't get me started on... So you, you go down to a site and you, you test the machine. It all works. And then you put 500 people in the field and then the cell's busy. And it's and, and you're trying to trying to do that because everybody's trying to do contactless. And, and then you go back to cash and then you run out of change. There's all this sort of fun that happens when you're, you're starting out in... in um, so it's like pop-ups, events, um, little bits and bobs. I've done some stuff at a brewery. Um, literally, I was doing my Lachmahan, which is the... Uh, or Manakish, which is kind of like peed which is also kind of like um mountain pizza lebanese style okay i'll get there in the end so yeah it's basically <laughs> it's basically spice spice mints on bread i'm sure i'm sure there's quite a few people out there that have, that have seen that about um and i like doing that and and kind of so on one hand um i do that sort of thing if there's a pizza oven there i i, I will never try and challenge the um the neapolitan pizza guys i think that's a uh, you know, and, 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 and making the poolish and all this sort of stuff. I, it's a real art form. Um, I'm getting there, but I'm, I'm not prepared. I, like people like peddling people, I take my hat off to them. Um, awesome. But, um, yeah, so I stick to, to, the, to my sort of Lebanese heritage. So, uh, yeah, and, and I'll make some shawarma. And I'll, so if you want a chicken version, if you don't like spice, so I mix lamb and beef, uh, and then I, and then I'll basically put kofta spices in with that. Um, nice. And when people say which which rub do you, I want to show you something actually. There you go. I bought this out here because people people talk about rubs. Now I think this is great because what happens is is, is um, I think it's the same with the America. Actually, I, I'm going to draw a parallel here. When the Americans were looking at us in the early in the pandemic, we're friends with them all now. But they're like, who are these English guys doing American barbecue? Mm -hmm. Like they go, oh you're like ah, that, yeah, but then they don't know what they're doing. Authentic. Now they believe it. They they believe it because we're importing their smokers or we're buying their rubs and Neil Serap came over, you know, he knows it now that we're really into it. Um, and, and, and people say, Wait, what do you use? And, and like, this is, these rubs, these are rubs, these are rubs, these are spices, 
but you know, when you when you look at that, it says made in Lebanon, right? When people talk to me about shawarma spices or kofta spices, right? If you if you see this stuff by Abido, made in Lebanon, right? This this is authentic, right? This has been used by the family for you know for generations, and before it was put in a packet by um, the guys in Lebanon, it was the family would make the spice mix and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I take a bit of my heritage. And I kind of anglicise it a little bit. Maybe I'll put some some extra cheese on there, um, and 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 things like that. And and and, and that's what I try to do. And I make some baba ganoush and some hummus. So that's one sort of menu I do. And then obviously, if I'm doing like a festival in the field, I'm doing like pulled pork. So I'll spend a couple of days doing the pork cup, fat packing it down. Then then basically like bain marie hot it. Um, basically heat it in the pack, split it open. I've, I've, you know, you learn you learn how to do it. Only a fool cooks barbecue on the day. Do you, do you see what I mean? If you're serving barbecue, do not yeah. cook it on the... Don't say, I'm going to stay up all night the night before and cook it, unless you've got a big team. Like Crossfire, there's, there's guys that do that because they've got a team and that's their setup. But when you're a small guy, like a one-man band, um, you kind of... There, there, there's the prep thing. So you, you kind of like... You, you've got to do a menu. So I do the smash burgers as well. Um, always popular. Um, try and get some really local aged, um, like Dexter, Dorset Dexter beef mints. So I'm kind of doing like um, um, sandwiches, American sort of, whether it's pulled pork or, or, or beef. Um, I'm looking at getting into doing, um, I want to do a, Philly, a steak Philly sandwich um, pop up. That's my next thing. Um, I just miss that so much. You know, like the green peppers and, the, and, mm. and like the onion with the cheese and, and like the, the, the but what I've, what I've decided is I want to smoke the beef. Then I like smoke it to medium and the, or medium rare and then smash it up. And then do it on the skillet. And I, I did some the other day. And I just like, I blew my mind off in the kitchen. I was like, right, <laughs> next next pop-up that I get, I'm doing this. Um, so, yeah, I, I like I like that. So, I don't know, donkey box, potentially. There, there's there's talks of getting a, um, there's a vehicle with a tow bar on its way to me shortly. Um, so, yeah, am I going to get a donkey box or, well, a double horse box and kind of build, build a service counter? And I think that what I would like to do with that is kind of like, use it for when i need it and then also like offer it out to people if they need like somebody that's starting out and they they need a service thing maybe i could say look pay me like you know rent this trailer as your service counters to help because not everybody can invest in stuff right yeah. so I, I think that it shouldn't just be sat in a car park like rusting away it's things have got to be used um maybe like team up with a couple of chefs from the local college give them an opportunity i think that's my next project really is to like create um get a few guys that want to work a little bit but they want to make money rather than me employing them and saying hey da, 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 make sure they've got all their credentials so that's kind of where we're going i think that um i'm going to be doing a bit more like event stuff in marquees and maybe offering a catering thing on the side i think that's kind of because people are asking that that's why i think that's yeah that's where it's coming from people are starting to ask me to do things and um I'm one of those guys that stupidly just says yes all the time. <laughs> and then I'm like, what am I doing? Then I put it off and then somebody else asks me. Um, but yeah, you, you need your family behind you and stuff like that because you can really rely on them if they want to help. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going. We're going on this journey of occasional pop-ups. And I, and I don't want to do it full-time though. I've, you know, I've, I've worked in, um, I've had a fish and chip shop when I when I left school because I, I didn't, didn't really do what I should have done at school. And uh, I, after a summer of dossing around, my dad said, you need to get a job. And I just looked in the paper and there was this chef's, uh, chef's job at um, a place called Shea Fred's, which is a very famous fish and chip shop. People like Russ Abbott used to used to eat there and oh. um, all, all sorts of famous people that would, would come down to Bournemouth, like Paul Daniels, they would all go there. It was that thing where... You know, you go in the restaurant and they get the photo with the with the celebrity doing the doing the like the, the circuit of Blackpool and Bournemouth and stuff. So yeah, they used to come in this fish and chip shop. So, you know, I've done that. I've done the catering full time. I've worked in pub kitchens. Um, and I yeah, as much as I love it, um, I don't want that every day of the week. So I think it's this sort of and this is a great thing about barbecue, right? Is that you can you can do these things occasionally and you can dip in yes. and out of it around your job and around your other commitments. It's not like having a premises and you've got to be there from like six in the morning till 11 at night, like I've done in the past, you know? Um, so yeah, exciting stuff. And, and, and there's also talks of me. I, I want to do some sort of, I'm finding that there's quite a, um, there's quite a lot of people that um, 
don't want to go to barbecue master classes per se but they want to learn how to stop burning chicken on barbecues so i think that my knowledge is good enough to help that little pocket of people on a local scale whether it's from my garden like having three or four people over um, like even if it's friends and family to start with because yeah. people always they you see they, they're they not on instagram so they're the guys my wife's like why are you on the phone again on a, on a thursday or friday night it's like because because matt's out and he's trying to cook this thing and he doesn't know what he's doing so i'm i'm talking him through the process on the phone so i think that's something that i want to do so i want to i want to do a bit of community work with with the people that don't see themselves as pit masters or or in the barbecue community and kind of get them into into where they, they could be because a lot of people are passionate about food they're just scared of it right yeah absolutely yeah well i mean it sounds like there's plenty plenty on the cards for you in the, in the next 12 months like sorry about like 10 minutes in? of stuff yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so you, obviously you were talking about a couple of different cuisines and that you uh yeah. and, and and things that you like to cook when you have done pop-ups what would you yeah. say is your your favorite thing to cook on a barbecue um it depends so um i would i would probably go if it's for me in the house with my family coming round. it's probably like my two-day marinade um lamb shawarma on the rotisserie in the Camado. And then I'm making nice. I'm making um, um, Lebanese mountain breads out of the um, at the Gosney Dome, and then obviously I've, I've done some baba ganoush by literally just roasting the um, sh one t out of some uh, <laughs> out of some aubergines and getting the getting the tahini out and getting the lemon and the garlic, um, getting some fresh parley, smashing some tabbouleh together, get the get the crack wheat wheat out the night before and soak that, and um, you know some nice fresh tomatoes and and that sort of thing. I think that's that's kind of where it's at with us, and 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 maybe yeah. doing some lamb koftas. That's 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 like that's the family. That's the one where everybody's happy um and they feel like they've been to a lebanese restaurant without having to go to london and spending 200 quid so yeah yeah <laughs> you, you've only charged 195 yeah something like that no, well, <laughs> don't trust me I've, I've had it over the years so i started i feel like it's time that I, and this is part of the thing i think with food i feel like i'm paying my family back for all the great things they've done over the years every time i get them over and i don't know if I, i'm sure a lot of people relate to this but it's like it is that moment where you feel like whether it's cooking a roast actually and you've got your, your mother and father-in-law around or, or, or your sister or whatever, you feel like you're giving them some love back yeah. um, and, and you enjoy it. And that's the thing, because some people don't enjoy the cooking bit. They enjoy having people over and drinking, but they, they don't execute the cooking bit very well. So it's good when you, you can kind of make that difference. I suppose actually that probably leads us into one of our favourite parts of the podcast when you're talking about some people don't execute it very well what uh Ooh. we love to talk about barbecue fails so uh ev everyone's got to have one so uh what, what for you chris is is a standout barbecue fail uh well, i've got got a few um i've got a couple really um, <laughs> so we got dave from wild potatoes or or or, or the big pork drop um the both. You, know, you want both um so um it was i'd upset victoria i think i'd been out a little bit heavy um the night before i think the air show was on in bournemouth uh it's all right you know we, we, we'll cook this and then we'll go we'll go and watch some of the air show um corn fed chicken on the rotisserie i'll make some dough from our potatoes we literally just got the gosney dough so i put it in sort of follow the recipe stuck it in tweaking the temperature i thought it's like an oven i can do this I can do this and it just comes out it's like liquidy it's like the, the potato is still hard and then i realized that i shouldn't have soaked the um the the, the potatoes after they come off the uh off, off the mandolin so basically mm. i've taken all the bits that help it sort of break down and i knew that i've made it hundreds of times yeah just like oh yeah you know just cooking away hangover um and you could just see yeah, first like what is this uh, the chicken was nice though um pork drop uh pit barrel cooker so, so just going back yeah. with the potatoes like it's so unforgiving as well isn't it like when a yeah. potato is hard it it's not even one that you can just politely it's no. it just oh. doesn't taste nice hard right so actually I, this is where i've got a shout out so now i've got the door for my gosney dome this week i am going to actually be able to do it where i can fire up some pizzas then i can make my dough for my potatoes i can put the door in and i can literally just leave it and forget about it right um 
So I'm looking forward to actually doing that. And the problem was I didn't have a door. So you either had the burner on or you had it shut down and then it wasn't enough heat. And so it was like, I was yo-yoing it and, and it wasn't cool. Um, so I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to doing that because actually I should have just realized you need a door to do stuff like that. You know, anything yeah. that takes a long period and consistent residual heat. Mm. Um, really, I should have just put it on the Kamado. Would have been, would have been fine. Um, but I think not as fun though, is it? It's not as fun if you nah, want to play with toys, don't you? No, nah, got exactly, exactly. So, um, that was that. So thanks Gosney for bringing out the door. It, it took a while, but I, I appreciate with them <laughs> that they want to get things right and they don't just release stuff. There was a guy that knocked one up on eBay, which was literally a panel. But if you notice the Gosney one, it's, it's got the proper seal around it and it's got the, the sliding vent. So I'm glad I didn't waste 50 quid. I, I'm, I'm sure the guy that made it brilliant and it, and it works for a reason, but um, yeah, now I've got the official one. I'm going to give that a go. Um, pork drop was mother was over um, doing some, we were doing some stuff. We we're doing the garden. I come over, did a garden for the day make some of that nice pulled pork yeah yeah so i went up to webster's butchers see joseph got a lovely lovely bit of pork uh boston bat i think it was like a it wasn't a cheap piece it was like a some gloucester spot special like you know one of these like rare breeds sort of <clears throat> really good quality hand reared blah 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 so i get that back get the rub on put the mustard on you know bit bit of bit of uh bit of i don't know i, don't, I forget which rub it was I, oh no i was making rubs at that point yeah, so it's like great, get it on. Uh, all right, let's go to um, let's go to some garden centres because it's a set and forget, right? That's the idea. You put <laughs> it on, and and so come back, come up the side of the house about two and a half hours later, and all I can is dee, 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 dee. now. I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I haven't got the whole uh, Wi-Fi meter, uh, whatever, because I, I just. I'm normally around, right? But I've got my Soriken, which is the real cheap. I've got it off Amazon or eBay, like 2016 or 2015. I bought this probe set. It's still going. I'm down to two probes out of the six work now. Um, and I left it out in the rain the other day. It still works, um, but it's not Wi-Fi. It's Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, but I come back, dee, dee, dee. my neighbours, I come on the street, he's like, oh, Chris, there's something beeping in your garden for the last, and he knows a barbecue. He's like, is, is it meant to do that? I was like, what? I was like, I run up the side, he's like, Oh man, there's smoke coming now. Basically, I'd, I'd, I, I had put the hooks in, but because this bit of um, pork was so heavy, I got my two hooks in on on the uh, on the rebar. You know how the pit barrel sets up, yeah. and I think obviously one has slipped. The pork's dropped. Then the next one's obviously it must have been there like dangling for a bit, and then it went poof, straight down into the fire pit. Um, yeah, and it was like 38, 38 quids worth of pool pork and there was like 12 people coming around to eat like that evening just a complete total write-off um yeah so yeah just just make sure you hook stuff up properly basically if you're wiring your house wire it up properly if you if you're hooking stuff in in your barbecue just make sure that you you actually like do the job so i think i hadn't gone through the muscle properly and i hadn't like kind of come back around the other side so yeah just um yeah, that's the pit barrel fail. But actually, that's the trusted cooker. That's that's like the first American uh, barbecue thing that I got. Um, my brother like recommended it to me. Actually, he said, "Well, I'd I'd get a pit barrel cooker." And I looked at it, and I think they were like three hundred odd quid, three hundred and thirty quid, and it actually got imported from America to my house. And uh, I built, I built, I built a deck just for it to go on. So I think the barbecue <laughs> cost three hundred quid, and then the deck cost like 1500 quid <laughs> i was like no no I need and, the, and the pork and the pork was two grand um, yeah ended up in the, yeah. In the bottom. so he, he can't yeah i mean this is the thing how we we do get a little bit mad don't we yeah we like build like everyone's building shacks and so this house that we're in now um i, I didn't even look around the house just went in the garden and i went oh there's a pagoda here uh that's a barbecue shack and Victoria's like, <laughs> you're not going to come and look in the house. It's like, no, 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 we're buying this house. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are mad, aren't we? We're totally mad. And she thought it was going to be like a yoga den, but um, how wrong was she? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. Oh, I, I, yeah, I feel absolutely gutted with that as well. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? I, yeah. we all make mistakes that's how we learn frankly and that, that's why we celebrate barbecue fails in fact 
we we did some recording some videos this weekend with our friend with um jody down at aos kitchens and you had an interesting one owen because you failed but then you saved it i did yes actually chris for you, you were obviously, you you popped in to see us at the yeah. weekend so if, obviously by the time this comes out it'd have been a little while ago but um yeah so after you left we kind of uh we did a ready steady cook challenge uh which we, which we're preparing for youtube so were you red basically tomato, like, were you red tomatoes or, or green peppers <laughs> well we didn't do that side of things but we did the premise of we all went and got bought a bag of food and the other people had to cook uh i got a bake essentially i, I got all sweet ingredients to do baking and i'm not a I did baker. See that. i did see that on the side mm. and i made a joke it's like oh is somebody making a cheesecake or something and you're like <laughs> you knew then that you knew that the pressure was on oh, my reaction. God. right it was uh so i decided to do a giant uh, the worst thing about it as well is jody had bought some scales because he, he bought he bought the bags he pre-bought some scales we turned them on the battery had gone Right. Uh, so we couldn't have a battery. So I literally just had to kind of free pour the ingredients to some extent. Uh, and I tried to cook a giant cookie on the Della Vita pizza oven. And as I pushed it in, as I pushed it into the <laughs> into the oven, one into of the, the logs, had, yeah, one of the logs had actually fallen on top of the cookie Ooh. and pretty much started setting it alight. So I had to kind of rush and get it out. And then in the end, I, I'd say, I don't know, 15% of it was kind of black and then I managed to flick it over and we ended oh. up having to finish it off in the monolith but uh so was this, it was a sunny side up uh sun, yeah cookie. a sunny side up yeah cookie yeah I think it did I, look pretty but it tasted it good. tasted good I think the ba the baking thing wasn't it let's go back to the pandemic when we did the Sunday roast uh raising money for charity that was a great one because it was gel it, oh no that was nice weather I think it was the I think it's the football one that was blown a uh, American football yeah so um yeah and I was doing Yorkshire puddings in an old Weber kettle I think I mentioned that to you guys didn't I mm, and, I, and did, it's yeah. like if you're blind ba it's blind baking isn't it I, I think yeah. baking anything I'd off my cap to Sue Stoneman at this oh, moment what a legend yeah. what a um, legend Sue's brownies oh my days and she had some at me too she's like oh, do you want some of my brownies I was like oh she's just but yeah so like it is one of those things like Yorkshire puddings um baking biscuits um all sorts of stuff um I think the trick is, it's like probably like make sure that your Kamado sat. I think that's the trick is use a Kamado, make sure it's sat at a good temperature, have your deflector plate in and maybe your divide and conquer system and kind of sit it up a little bit higher. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, yeah. Definitely, mate, I, it definitely doesn't work in a pizza oven. Well, <laughs> maybe with the door, maybe with the, maybe with the yeah. door. I mean, there's maybe uh, you can say, I'll, I'll set myself a challenge but on the back of this that I will try and bake a cookie. Was it was a cookie, did you say? Yeah, it was yeah. a giant cookie that you put in a cast iron pan. So it wasn't a very merry land, was it? Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm here all night. No, I'm not. Uh, people tune out at that moment. Um, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Oh, actually, look, uh, th again, this has got to be the perfect opportunity now to move into our barbecue bingo. Ah, segue uh, in, we're segue in. Se yes. We're segue in, <laughs> so natural. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, so I'll share my screen. As ever, we've got our, our spinning wheel of ingredients um, where we'd love for you to cook whatever it lands on. However, I think as it's a, a new season, so this is now the fourth season, we'd like to make a slight wow. change. Fourth season. Give, give and, a round of applause. Season four, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it on season um, four. Without well, killing each other. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys know, you guys are awesome. Yeah. No, no. Season four. Well done, guys. I know what, well, I know what that means in podcasts. I want to say that, actually, guys. Like, I've been involved in production. I think one of you's worked in, in radio broadcast before. Mm. It is a lot. And 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 like obviously the guests, but um yeah, well done guys, well done. Cheers. It's been it's been there a journey. Was a, there was a stat. <laughs> it has. There was a stat when we were launching actually that most pe most people find it difficult to get past episode six. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Uh, not listeners, as in the actual people recording it. Six yeah. episodes. Yeah. I think yeah, you don't realize how much actually but... goes into it with like the planning, what you're going to do, the recording, the editing, yeah. um, the uploading, and all of that. But it's yeah. also thanks to people listening. You yeah. know, we wouldn't be here if it was like three people listening every week. No. Maybe maybe we would, no. just not recording. Oh, trust it. me. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done DJ shows literally for three people uh, mm. on SoundCloud back, back in the day. But yeah, no, well done, guys. <laughs> 
so what we'd like to do is do a slight change and in one of the episodes that we recorded pre this was we kind of did it by accident but it ended up being one of our guests had kind of give us inspiration to put put something on there during the actual episode so now we'd like to make that a permanent fixture in in the we're going to spin this and whatever it lands on, we'd love you to cook. However, what we'd like you to do is give us one ingredient or dish to, to add to the list in hope that the next guest that we record um, lands on that and, and so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll get people to add to it every, every week. So uh, there's my signature dish. And that is hope. Well, if if that lands on that, we'd like you to cook what you're famous for. I'm I'm wondering if it's the shawarma you spoke about earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What right now? Yeah. Right now, got to do it. This, 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 this very no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Send it in the post, will you? Get it Ubered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything on um, that that wheel that either you're allergic to, or like you couldn't touch for some reason? Well, pineapple's not allowed on pizza, but that's not barbecue. Um, <laughs> uh, la, la, la. No, I, I think I'm, I think I'm all right. I mean, the ice cream's obviously a, a bit, a bit of a. It's that's that's the banana skin, isn't it? Yeah. But it, again, it can yeah. be used as an ingredient or part of something you're putting together. So it could be served on the side. You've talked about the cookie already. Yeah. Um, it, it's, so, it's just interesting to see how people's brains work when they start thinking about this. Yeah. Okay okay i'm going to give it a spin and then in the back in the, in, in your mind have, have have something ready for us to add in okay three two one it's always the awkward moment of the quiet spin ow <laughs> we know it's not going on a pizza <laughs> you have a winner pineapple ah yeah i mean this comes back to my seafood thing where you want to like sometimes you want to keep things so you want me to tell you what i would do with it yeah please do what straight straight I mean, away your initial you, no no just gives your initial thoughts and then obviously when, when you actually get around to doing it for us all we ask is that you just tag us in on instagram so that we, uh, and facebook or whatever so that we can we can just kind of repost it and share it okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so there's two things that i could do with that it's like a pineapple upside down sort of steam pudding sort of thing in the Kamado. Mm -hmm. nice. um, my son would would probably, and my mother-in-law would definitely enjoy that. So I would probably be consulting her tomorrow morning about that. Um, <laughs> no, I don't wake up with my mother-in-law for the record. I, 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 just, <laughs> okay. I, I pop round there after the school run, just make sure they're all right. Sure. Take them to the so. um, uh, <laughs> that's another show otherwise. Yeah. That's, a, that's the other show. Um, uh, <laughs> The other thing that I do like is obviously when when you're doing um, you know something like um, some pork and parmesan or some um, rump caps and picanha or you're doing um, some chorizo. What you want is is something at the end of that dish to basically kind of um, cut back uh from that sort of meal that you've been having almost Brazilian barbecue. So I would actually be rolling that pineapple just skin it ram this ram ram the uh ram ram the roast history right through the middle as they say and then um basically coat it in um in in cinnamon and and sugar um brown yeah. sugar nice uh, uh, and just give Sounds you that good. nice little thing and actually you could actually top that with ma maple and pecan ice cream so i i really just smashed yeah. it so, well, I mean, that, those are the two things, and actually, I, I could probably, I could probably, yeah, I, I, I'd give them both a go at some point in the coming weeks, actually, because my son's on this mad thing at the moment. He's six. Uh, Dad, I want a mango. I'm like, you see the price of mangoes now. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, but you don't want to discourage your child from 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 putting uh, fruit or putting um, yeah or vegetables in the basket. So it was blueberries for a while. Crikey, that got expensive. Yeah. Now it's mangoes. But obviously mangoes is quite a bit. You don't, it's not that, you know, you don't get a sonic. You've got the middle bit that's got to come out. So it's, it's not the most economical fruit. So, um, but yeah, he loves a pineapple. So we're in a pineapple phase, um, a, a mango phase phase at the moment. So yeah, I'm going to do something with that. Wicked. 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 What about, uh, what about the ingredients uh, to add to the list for our next guest? 
what, what are you going to add for us? Sumac. Oh, a lovely bit of spice mix. Mm. Sumac. Nice. Do as yeah. you will with it. Uh, I'll be interested. I, I don't want to say anything as, as to what I do with it. It's probably quite obvious what I do with it. Um, but I want to, I'll, I'll be really interested to see, um, to see what people come up with. And maybe they'll go away and research right. it now, just in case they're, oh, there we go. It's already on the wheel. Wicked. It's on the wheel. It's there. Like, uh, so you, you've got, you guys have got good production values. I like, I like what you did there. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been doing. So I've, ne- I've, I've got gra- I've got visuals up behind on a green screen before. But I've never been there with. I, you know what? One of my biggest barbecue fails is actually I don't know how to do the um, the Instagram giveaway wheel. I've always failed at it. Every time I do a giveaway, I, I announce the wrong person, or <laughs> I, I, I I don't ship the thing to the right person, or I just I've given up on them. But I, I probably should do one soon. Any anyway, but um, maybe maybe I could give away. I should give away a sizzle fest. Um, 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 Yeti flask, by the way. There are a few. Oh, left people would flasks. go for that. People would yeah, go for that. I think I might do that when when you let me know when the when the episode's going out. I'm going to do some sizzle fest swag because I know a few people got a bit hazy and and didn't get around to purchasing it on the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, definitely. sounds good to us. Oh, brilliant. Um, well, the, yeah. So basically, if look forward to hearing you know seeing what you do with pineapple. I said just tag us in uh, on on Insta and, and socials. That would be fantastic. Is there is there anything perhaps that we haven't covered yet, or anything you know that you, that you'd love to kind of talk to us and, and obviously our listeners about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I want to actually, I want to thank, I want to thank a few people. Um, obviously, the guys at the guys at SoCal. Um, but, well, actually, you should start with my family. Yeah, big up my family. Um, you know, I start I started barbecuing at the age of probably five or six because my mum's Lebanese and my, my dad's English, but he lived out in the Middle East. So um, if I didn't burn, you know, he said, don't touch that. And and uh, uh, and obviously he came back from the kitchen and I burnt my fingers. <laughs> and then next time I was like, daddy, I can do this, not burn myself. Um, and so, yeah, I, just like that initial thing and and my heritage, my culture, my family out in the Middle East, you know, that's, that is the foundations of why I'm into cooking for sure. Um, and then obviously all the guys at SoCal, the staff, the people that actually work there, um, that that have that have been supportive, um, that probably still think that me and Charles and James and Meat Fire Whiskey and and um, and Cork and Hampshire, all those, they all think we're nuts. But um, uh, you know those guys, uh, and also just like the, the the opportunity that I've had this summer, that came about as a bit of an accident, uh, where I was uh, up in Peckham probably last January or February at, um, at an art exhibition and I was buying some some artwork for my studio here so I've got the artwork but I haven't got the passports and I'm a weird guy I'm a weird guy um, and lo and behold it was the day that I first actually met uh, Christian um, Stevenson DJ barbecue and we were just he we were just chatting away and I was I, I think I was wearing this hat or no I was wearing um I was wearing a a, um, a, a snow's hat and he's like hey man you, are you you you've been there you're you're you one of those guys that was on that tour i didn't follow I, I followed him but he doesn't follow me and he must have seen it through a repost mm. and and he's like oh blah 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 and, and i actually his friend was selling art and they run this thing called cool wall posters and so they're all like x vintage original prints that went out to like cinemas and films so this i've got like this david bowie thing a daft punk thing but these are like original publicity prints and they're they're, they're very limited run so I actually got chatting to him and I bought some from his friend's business and he happened to be there and we were chat- chatting away uh, and, and I mentioned Camp Festival and he just sort of said to me, um, no, he said, hey, you're, you're from Dorset, right? I said, oh, I'm from Dorset. He said, oh, just, so you're from Dorset. He said, um, I'm, I'm doing Camp Festival. Um, and I was like, actually, I'm, I'm going this year with my family. And he said, uh, and then we started talking about music. He said, hey, just, just bring some records. Come, come and spin some tunes for us at Camp Festival. And then obviously, like, uh, I'm like, what? And and so I go to Camp Festival, I take my records, and next thing I'm DJing um, with him and and Olivia, his, his, his French, he's a French DJ that works with Giles Peterson and people like, you know, these guys have been around the business for a while. Uh, and and they liked it. And, and, and it was kind of like, that's where I met T-Bone, um, T-Bone Chops, uh, yeah. Hay, Hamish that works with him, uh, David Fennings, there's a whole crew there that, that, and I, that is the day that I realized that doing barbecue at big events, I don't know if you've ever seen their setup where it's like four massive smokers, 
you know they've got they've got the whole leg of beef on the rotisserie mm. these guys are legit they are the real deal and i didn't realize until i got there that day that operation and the professionality of these chefs these pit masters they are uk pit masters and they are there smashing out you know like three thousand smash burgers over a weekend and and i felt guilty because i want to go there and help them cook but they don't even talk to each other these guys can just literally they cook you know it's like i've been in the kitchen at the, at the dorchester and and i've and i've worked at cock d'arge on, on on doing events but i've been in their kitchens and i see the way they work these like well-drilled like high-class michelin star restaurant chefs and they and it's just and it just moves it moves plates move they don't talk they don't need to talk they shout like move, okay service bang but these guys that they're, they're, it's like watching ballet when you see these guys work and i just want i just want to go and get involved and I'm like, because I finished DJ, I was like, is there anything I can do? It's like, no, man, it's, it's cool. And then, and then obviously I get the phone call, like, do you want to come and come and DJ for us at Big Festival? And so I've left DJ, but because of barbecue and a weird sort of bumping into somebody, I've ended up DJing for barbecue, for DJ barbecue. But, and, and that's been a really cool journey. So I do want to thank them this year, because actually when, when I left, left London, there was a massive um, hole in, in my thing where I was used to going out and just getting the party going and stuff like that so um that's another sort of journey that has, has kind of like evolved um as a result of barbecue and um like i say it's like a family and 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 the cool thing is there is is that they are they are like a really nice team humble guys he's probably one of the busiest guys in barbecue but the way that to watch somebody actually um come and um like when people come and talk he he always got the time and and it's people like this yeah. that are teaching or showing that barbecue is possible and and like people they buy a book then they go and try a recipe like we did in the in the early days i mean jamie oliver's 20 minute cooks came out yeah. and somebody gave it to me i was like i can do all of this anyway but nice one but you end up doing them anyway it's the same with this barbecue thing. it just takes you up a level so and, and the likes the, the likes of genevieve the likes of marcus i want to thank those guys obviously for pushing the agenda for getting on tv for making people believe that they can they can go out and do this thing in their garden um and and it's not even charles with, with like spice punch is coming down this weekend um absolutely awesome um actually it might not be this weekend when this goes out but what, <laughs> what i'm saying is, is is you've got to thank these people that are hosting events that are opening barbecue schools um and then all of us guys that do the instagram thing and and the people that are sharing their cooks because i get inspired every time i go for instagram um i just wish i had more time to 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 to, to like copy or, or follow other people's cooks but um yeah i just want to thank everybody basically that's a small part of my journey this year which i would have never believed that happened would happen but it's happening um but it is it is a big thing and it is like you know before i go i just want to bless the whole the whole barbecue family i want to thank everybody for um being involved all the way up and just like you know keep keep looking after each other keep cooking keep inspiring you know and 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 you know let's have a this conversation it will be um just as amazing to have in another two years time because i i, I yeah. don't believe that this is not just a phase this is this is a this is this this is a lifestyle and it's a longevity it's a, it's a community it's a family it's it's got everything and and yeah bless everybody thank you so much for your support um sizzle fest um and and my own personal big nose barbecue page uh yeah and keep keep listening to this podcast because you guys honestly you, you give up your time to listen to people like me rattle on um and, I, and, <laughs> and you know we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't do it if we didn't love it though so yeah <laughs> before it's i drink it, sure. before i drink any more scotch and, and go on anymore um no i just <laughs> i want to i want to thank everybody for for um giving me the time to to share to share everything my my uh, journey my platform and and um long may long may continue for all of us yeah, 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 thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. I'm sure we will speak to you again on here. But you're you're 100 right, and you can only look like two, three years ago at what UK barbecue is yeah. compared to what UK barbecue is now. Yeah, and it's because of all those inspiring people that whether yeah. you turn on the TV, whether you're on Netflix, whether you're on Instagram, and you see the yeah. progression. And long may it continue. And yeah, thank you as well for everything you do for the community because it's a lot yeah cheers guys no that's cool and and as i say uh, it's 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 a very it's very humbling to 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 hear that man and yeah big respect guys thank you so much god bless you all really appreciate uh, really appreciate your time well, thanks for coming on chris and uh yeah well, let's let's try and catch up again soon in person yeah we'll, we'll see yeah. you soon we'll see you soon <laughs> yeah nice one guys cheers
That's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. It was great to catch up with Chris, aka Big Nose Barbecue. Uh, obviously, plans for Sizzle Fest 2023. Uh, there's lots of things that Chris is looking to do, uh, and we can't wait to hear and, and, and see more of that over the coming months. Um, as ever, we'd love to hear from you, so please get in contact. Tell us what you want to talk about. Uh, go and visit our website where we've got the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast shop, where there's uh, products, things where we're working on an affiliate basis with the brands like Thermapen, so where you're cooking to temperature and not time. You've got some merch from the podcast uh, and other bits and pieces we hope to go on, on, on there soon. Until next time, keep on grilling. Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.